welcome to Fayette County Public Library Storytime. This is Miss Angie and I'm Miss Kim. And we have some wonderful stories for you today. The first one is The Mean Hyena, which is a folk tale from Malawi. You know where Malawi is? That's in Africa. Tell me, who is this? He thinks his vest is so fine, he never takes it off, even when he sleeps. He's talking about this up on the board. Who is that? The turtle. Kamba, the tortoise. One evening, Kamba was walking along a path in the tall, dry grass. Sniff, trot, sniff, trot. Here comes Fisi, the hyena, the big troublemaker. Eh, Kamba. Want to go for a ride? Eh. Want to fly to the sky? Eh, said the hyena. No, thank you, answered the tortoise. He knew about Fissy's nasty tricks. The hyena lowered his head, picked up the tortoise with his mouth, and walked over to a tree. He pushed Kamba's shell between two branches and left him there, stuck tight. How cruel. That was a mean trick to play on a tor tortoise, wasn't it? The hyena danced away, barking and laughing. Ha, 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 ha. The tortoise pulled his head, his feet, and his tail into his shell, and he began to think very hard. Next morning, he put his head, his feet, and his tail out of his shell. It's a new day, he said to himself, and he chewed on the bark of the tree until he had made a small, bristly brush. Coats, new coats, beautiful new coats, come and get your beauty, cried the tortoise. The zebra heard him. I'd like a different coat, said the zebra, who at that time was white from head to tail. Now, because this is a folk tale, it's not necessarily true. It's yeah. just a story that's been told by the people. The tortoise looked at the zebra. Yes, he said. You will be very beautiful. Bring black dye, lots of it. The zebra brought black dye and the tortoise began slowly, carefully to make long flowing stripes on his coat. The zebra turned this way and that way so the tortoise could paint everywhere. Now, until that time, the zebra had lived in the village like his cousin the horse, but the zebra's new coat was so lovely that people wanted to touch her all the time. This annoyed the zebra and ran away into the wild country. He has stayed there ever since. Coats, new coats, beautiful new coats, come and get your beauty, cried the tortoise again. The leopard was tired of his plain yellow coat, and so he went to see the tortoise in the tree. Please, could you paint my coat? asked the leopard. But don't give me stripes or the zebra will think I copied her. The tortoise told the leopard to bring him some brown dye. Then he stretched out on a branch of the tree, rolling this way and that way as the tortoise painted spots of many shapes and sizes on his coat. Now, until this time, the leopard had lived in the village like his smaller cousin, the cat. But the people of the village loved the leopard's new coat so much that they were always stroking and petting him. This bothered the leopard, and he too went to live in the wild country where he still lives today. Coats, new coats, beautiful new coats, come and get your beauty. Animals lined up beneath the tree to receive new colors and designs from the tortoise. Finally, night skulking Fissy heard about Kumba's wonderful coat painting. The hyena was quite proud of his smooth brown coat, but it seemed dull compared to the other animals. So he went to see the tortoise in the tree. 
give me my beauty? he demanded. First, help me get down from here, said the tortoise. The hyena took the tortoise in his mouth and gently lowered him to the ground. Well, that was nice. I mean, crocodiles carry their babies in their mouths, but they do it real gentle because they are really strong. Mm -hmm. Now bring sticky tree gum, said the tortoise. The more the better. Fissy soon returned with a bowl of tree gum. The tortoise cheerfully dabbed globs and splots of gum onto the hyena's coat. Am I beautiful? asked the hyena when the tortoise had finished. You have the coat you deserve, the tortoise answered, nodding with satisfaction. Look at me, look at me, the hyena yipped as he ran through the tall dry grass. The grass stuck to his coat, but the hyena didn't notice. Then the gum began to itch. The hyena rolled in the dirt. Twigs and burrs and pebbles stuck to him. Look at me, look at me, he yelped. <laughs> You're smiling because you know what he looks like. When he was tired of running, the hyena pranced into the village to show off his new coat. But instead of admiring him, people began to laugh. Eh, am I not beautiful? Like the other animals, he asked. Then he turned his head, and for the first time, he saw his new coat. He looked as beautiful as the garbage heap. Ha, 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 laughed the hyena. I look really funny, don't I? Eh? <laughs> I was trying to make you laugh. Now I'll go wash this off. Ha, ha, ha. But Fizzy couldn't wash the gum off his fur. He chewed and chewed at it until the sticky gum filled his teeth. It was months before all the gum was gone. The hyena's fur, which had once been so smooth and shiny, stood up in rough patches on his back. If you meet the hyena today and laugh at him, he will laugh right back. <laughs> I look beautiful. I look really funny, don't I? I was trying to make you laugh. <laughs> you just can imagine why since that time he has stayed away from that tortoise. So you see, don't play a trick on someone unless you want an even bigger trick played on you. You think the hyena learned his lesson? <laughs> Maybe so. Okay, Miss Angie. All right. We, okay, we're going to do a flannel board, and these are little tortoises. And what you're going to do is, I'm going to give you each two. You're going to count how many shapes you see on its shell. <laughs> and then you're going to place it up here on the board under the correct number, okay? All right, so look at your tortoises, and we'll just go down the number line. Who has a tortoise that has nothing on its shell? Put it right there. Good job. Okay, now we're looking for the tortoise that has what? What's the next number? One. Okay. And who has the next tortoise? Very good. Okay. Who's got the one that has how many? Three. Good job. Okay. All right. And what's the next number? Okay. Who's got the tortoise that has four shapes? job, Sammy. Excellent. Okay. The next number is? Five. Good job, Finally. Sammy. Finally. <laughs> Layer. 
Okay, next number is? Six. Good job. Okay, and who's got the next tortoise? Clayton, good job. All right. All right, next number is? Eight. And last but not least, nine. Good job. All right. Everybody gets a big hand. Fantastic. Am I quick? <laughs> the next story, Chucky Rabbit's Big Bad Belly Ache. This is a trickster tale, too. Down here in Choctaw Country, most folks will tell you that Chuck Feek Rabbit is lazy. And then they'll say, and watch your food when Chuck D is around. Blink once and it'll all be gone, like that one time long ago. Miss Shakuta Possum needed a new house. Several of her friends agreed on an everybody work together day to build her one. All except Chuck Fee Rabbit, that is. Chuck Fee, would you like to help build me a house? asked Miss Possum. Chula Fox, Nita Bear, Lucy Turtle, and Kenta Beaver will all be there. Oh, I'm just so sorry, said Chuck Fee Rabbit. I'm much, much too busy on that day. But I didn't even say which day. Oh, on which day, asked Chuck Fee. Tomorrow. Yep, yep, yep. Much, much too busy tomorrow. So sorry. Oh, that's too bad, says Miss Shikata. I'm making dinner with fresh homemade butter for everyone who helps. Oh, wait, said Chuck Fee. I just remembered. It's the next day that I'm too busy. Tomorrow I can most certainly be there. Well, that's just how Chuck Fee Rabbit is. Early the next morning, everyone showed up at Miss Possum's place. She had made cornbread biscuits, grape dumplings, tanchi labano, which is Choctaw kind of corn stew, and best of all, lots and lots of homemade butter. It was creamy and delicious, and it was hard to make, a real treat. But all that food would have to wait for dinner after the work was done. When the working started, Kenta did the soft sauce sawing. Chula did the dig dig digging for the corner post. Miss Shikata did the sweep sweep sweeping, while Nita Bear and Lucy Turtle did the ham ham hammering. Since they didn't really have hammers back in those days, Lucy kindly agreed to be the hammer. And Rabbit? Well, as usual, Chuk had disappeared. Chula Fox called out, Chuck Fee, where are you? From behind a pile of rocks, Rabbit answered, Over here. Well, why aren't you working? asked Chula. I'm sick, said Chuck Fee. I have a fever, but I think it will pass soon enough, and then I'll be ready to work. When no one was watching, Chook V went down to the cold water spring where the food was kept and took the tub of homemade butter. He carried it back to his hiding spot behind the rocks. Chook V could hear the saw saw sawing and the ham ham hammering. He heard Miss Possum sweep sweep sweeping and Chula Fox's dig dig digging. This working and building could take all day, he said to himself. Chukfi took the lid off the tub of butter. It was full. He didn't want to wait for supper. He wanted to taste it right now. So he licked the top of the thick, creamy spread. Once again, Chula called out, 
Is your fever gone yet? Rabbit ran his tug along his buttery lips. Just starting, he said. This was sort of the truth, not about his fever, but he was just starting to eat that creamy butter. Mmm, it was so good. Just one more taste, he told himself. They'll never even notice. Then another, and another. He slid his paw deep into the butter and ate whole pawfuls at a time. After a while, Chula Fox called out again. How about now? Has your fever run its course? Chukfi looked at the tub of butter. About halfway, he answered. The sun moved across the sky overhead. By the middle of the afternoon, Rabbit had still not started working. How's your fever now, hollered Shula. Almost gone, said Chukfi. Yep, that's right. The tub was nearly empty. He scraped the last bit of butter from the bowl and slipped it into his mouth. He lay back against the rocks, and his belly was full. When he could move again, he snuck down to the spring and returned to that empty tub. As the sun started down for the end of the day, Rabbit appeared from behind the rocks. Okay, he said, I'm ready to work. But it's too late, Miss Possum's house is finished. Oh, I'm so sad, Chukfi said. I missed all the work. Oh, that's okay, said Miss Possum. At least you're feeling better. Now let's eat. <laughs> Miss Possum spread out the food. When she opened the lid to the big tub of butter, she gasped. Someone ate it all, she said, showing everyone the empty tub. It wasn't me, said Chuk Fee. I was sick all day. They all nodded. That's true, said Nita Bear, but who? It could have been any of you, said Chula Fox. All of us went down to the water to get a drink. Any one of you could have eaten the butter. Not me, said Nita Bear, Luxy Turtle, and Kenta Beaver all at the same time. Well, said Miss Possum. Let's just eat all this other food, and I'll make some more butter another time. And they did eat, that is. They munch, munch, munch the cornbread biscuits. They slurp, slurp, slurp the tonchi labana. And then they smack, smack, smacked on the grape dumplings. Chukfi didn't want the others to know that he was already full. So even though his belly was great big stuffed, he ate everything Miss Possum gave him. Yeah. Look at his face. After the meal, they all lay down for a nap. While the others slept, Chukfi saw a little bit of butter still on the fur of his paw. He rubbed it gently on Nita Bear's nose. Then he licked his paws clean and lay down, too. When the others woke, Chukfi said, Why don't we check everyone's nose? Whoever ate the butter might still have some left there. One by one, Chula Fox examined their noses. Kenta, your nose is clean. Luxie, yours is kind of dirty, though certainly not buttery. But Nita Bear, your nose looks awfully shiny and greasy. Nita licked her nose. Well, it does taste like butter, but I didn't eat it. Poor Nita, nobody believed her, and they were mad. They pointed their fingers, paws, and claws at her. You ate the butter, they shouted. Chukfi had such a hard time not laughing. To him, this was so funny. What do you think will happen? Yeah. 
Then his tell-tale belly began to shake and tremble. His tummy rumbled, and before he could even get his paw up to cover his mouth, which is, of course, always good manners, he let out a great big burr. Oh, he said quite quickly, excuse me. But it was too late. The others had already smelled Chukfi's big, bad butter breath. It was you, they all shouted. Not Nita. You ate all the butter. Let's get him, growled Nita Bear. Chukfi tried to hop away, but his belly was too full. He was too heavy. He tripped over his own floppy feet and rolled down the hill all the way to the river. Splash! But because butter is lighter than water, Chukfi floated downstream and away from the others. Chukfi escaped this time, and maybe, just maybe, he learned a lesson. Then again, probably not. But for the next four weeks, Chukfi Rabbit did have one really, really big, bad bellyache. I can't imagine eating that much butter. Hang on, he's still ate. Possum gave him. <laughs> yeah, all the food the possum had to. So it was that on this particular everybody worked together day, Nobody but Chukfi Rabbit got any butter. Well, maybe need a bear if you count that one little lick on her nose. But Miss Possum did get a nice new house, and everybody did feel real happy about that, as helping others is always more joyful than even the best butter ever. <laughs> Miss Angie couldn't reach them, maybe. She was sneaky, wasn't she? The legend of the beaver's tail. Do you know what a beaver's tail looks like? What's it look like? Tell us. Can you tell me, Clayton? It's long and furry. Long and furry? Let's find out what you think. This is the legend of his tale. Long ago, Beaver did not look like he does now. Yes, he was a chubby fellow. And yes, he had two very large front teeth. But his tail was not wide and flat. Beaver's tail was thick with silky fur. The way it used to be. Look at my glorious tail, Beaver said to Bird. I bet you wish you had one like this, Bird said. Beaver, it is a fine tail. But truly, all I wish for is a cozy nest for my family. Beaver ignored Bird. He fluffed and plumped his tail as Bird flew off to hunt for twigs and leaves. This tail is the tail to end all tales, Beaver said to Deer. I'll bet you wish you had one like this. Deer said, Beaver, it is a fine tail, but truly all I wish for is some tender grass for my family to eat. So Beaver ignored Deer. He brushed his tail on one side and then the other as Deer left to forage for food. I'm just saying, said Beaver to the fish, this tail of mine is absolutely the most magnificent tail a creature could have. I bet you wish you had one like this. Fish leaped from the water and said, Beaver, 
it is a fine tale, but truly all I wish for is calm and warm water to rest in. He already has water. But he wants warm water. I think he's in salty or cold water. Yeah. Sometimes I relax in the cold Well, if you look at the trees in the picture, what time of year is it? fall so it's starting to get cool so the yeah. water's kind of cool sometimes i relax in the, in the warm water in the pool on cloudy beaver ignored fish and fish struggled on through the icy water as beaver looked at his own reflection he turned round and round trying to catch a glimpse of that glorious tail hmm, said beaver how rude i think my friends are jealous of this beautiful tail of he waddled off to gnaw on a log. Autumn turned to a shivery winter. Beaver lumbered through the woods and then began to have a good chew on the trunk of a large tree. Every now and then he would stop to run in circles around the trunk. In this way he could chase his tail and give it yet another admiring look. Chew, chase. Look, Beaver was so caught up in this game, he did not notice the tree creaking and teetering back and forth as he chipped away at its base. What do you think is going to happen? She's probably going to get hurt. It's going to hit his tail and then it's going to be fat like a Oh, crash. Smash! Beaver's fluffy, glorious tail was trapped beneath the massive fallen tree. Beaver tugged and pulled. When he finally got his tail out, it was no longer fluffy, beautiful, or glorious. Oh, my tail, moaned the beaver. And he sat and cried himself into a huge puddle of salty tears. But no one heard his cries or came to comfort him. And it was when Beaver stopped crying for the loss of his glorious tail that he cried harder and longer for the loss of his friends. Well, this story goes on a little bit longer. What do you think is going to happen? He's going he's he's to turn around and sad and then he's going to realize... Well, he thought he was a fine beaver with that fluffy tail, so I'm not sure he's concerned about that, that fact with his flat tail. But he did have, ends up with a flat tail. And in the spring, all the animals come back, and they see a lot of things that they needed. The grass for the deer. The, when he built the dam in the water, that made that area of water warmer for the fish. So everything got a little bit better for all the other animals. He felt ashamed, so he was apologizing to them, and then they let him know that he had actually helped them. So they were all happy about his wide, flat, furless tail. And then Beaver decided that a flat tail was glorious, too. Because it helped him swim. Free tail wouldn't. It helped him make better friends, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sometimes if you're like bothering a beaver, they'll like turn around and flush flat the like the water they'll go mm-hmm. and they'll mm-hmm. give it at you, they'll throw the water. Yeah, back. yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. The water and shoot them back. Yeah. The water. Well, that's about all of our time for today. So we want to say goodbye and thank you for visiting our story time. <laughs>